This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha, and welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe. It's been my pleasure for a while now to bring you my favorite uh, people and uh, having and our conversations with them. Today we have a guest that I think that you will find very interesting. I would like to uh, introduce all of you who haven't already met him to Kuhio Lewis, who is the CEO of the uh, nonprofit organization called Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement, or CNHA, which most of us know your organization as. Welcome, Kohio. Thank you, God, for having me. Yeah, I want to talk to you because, well, first of all, tell the people uh, what your organization does and, sure. um, you know, who's, uh, who makes up the organization. CNHA has been around for 21 years. We're a nonprofit member-based organization. So we have over 100 Native Hawaiian organizations that pay dues to us. And by way of those dues, we provide services to them. So Over 100 uh, Hawaiian <coughs> organizations be belong to our, Belong yes. as members of your mm -hmm. organization. So we're a member-based organization. We're governed by those members as well. So if you're a part of CNHA, you can be on the governing board. But our focus areas is advocacy for Native Hawaiians, so public policy. Uh, we do capacity building, so we do some direct service. We also have a loan fund, a $4.5 million loan fund that re revolves to support Native Hawaiians uh, with economic uh, development. So, um, and we put on our Native Hawaiian convention every year. Right. I've been to it. It's you know, quite a few, uh, a very good cross-section of the Native Hawaiian community. Mm -hmm. Uh, participates in in your uh, activities and especially at the convention absolutely yep. so if you're a politician out there make sure that if you want to uh, make friends with the Native Hawaiians you ought to attend the uh, CNHA convention every year yep. I just thought I'd mention that because um, I used to be in the profession <laughs> Any, you sure anyway were. <laughs> I wanted to talk to you because um, well, first of all, because of what you do and the extensive reach you have, but uh, also about recent events that occurred uh, in the Hawaiian community with the um, situation at the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, mm -hmm. where we uh, saw a group, uh, a group of people, Hawaiian and non-Hawaiian actually, as it turns out, uh, from the Polynesian nation of Atua, a two way, mm -hmm. uh, basically go and uh, try to um, t take over, mm -hmm. as they, you know, this is what they state, take over the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. I'm not sure what, but it <laughs> looks like the assets. And right. in, the, in the course of doing that, uh, there was actually uh, some people from the Office of Hawaiian, some staff people, not mm -hmm. even the trustees, but some staff people who were physically um, beaten up, I mean physically hurt. In fact, Assaulted, one uh, yeah. friend of mine uh, or person I know uh, even had his ribs uh, mm -hmm. broken. Yep. yep. So, it, you know, and as a result of that incident, you um, and a number of other leaders in the Native Hawaiian community uh, actually held a press conference. So I thought today it might be worthwhile for people listening to understand what happened and why the reaction and who the reaction was from. So uh, why don't you tell us all about it? Well, I think I was shocked just like everyone else when we learned about what happened at the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. And it happened on a date very significant to the Hawaiian community. The and Hawaiian what people, date was that? January 17th, which marks the date of the overthrow of the Hawaiian Kingdom. Yeah, because I, like many others, were, uh, you know, watching the events at the uh, state capitol mm -hmm. as part of the um, commemoration Right. Of what is a very sad and significant right. day for our right. community. So on that day, of course, over 126 years ago, our queen was overthrown. So annually, a number of Native Hawaiian organizations come together for a peaceful march from Mauna Ala, where our queen is resting, to the state capital. 
Right. And it's, of course, to remind everyone what our queen stood for, which is actually peace and reconciliation. Right. So quite the opposite happened on that day. So while a number of our Hawaiian groups were marching through this peaceful protest from or peaceful march from Mauna Ala to the capital, the kingdom of Atui, uh, the Polynesian kingdom of Atui, was at Oha, uh, conducting themselves in a way that is just not becoming of what our queen would want or any of us. I, I understood they, they were actually pretending to be federal marshals, of all things. I mean, they right. were, I, I didn't understand that part. I didn't understand how a, what an, uh, the action of a separate activist group, uh, why would they pretend to be federal marshals, of all things? You know, that's Which a, is so inconsistent with the whole idea of uh, what that day was about. I mean, that day was about commemorating uh, the fact that, e that the United States landed troops in Hawaii mm -hmm. illegally. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to copy what the U.S. does, right. why would you do that and, and espouse to be on the side of the Queen and our history and the rest? Right. I think this... First of all, Hawaiians have an unrelinquished sovereignty. Right? Yes, absolutely. So, and, and, and that's my, I, be, I believe that 100%. Right. We just lack the government structure to uphold that sovereignty. And so what we have right now is a number of Hawaiian groups who have self-proclaimed themselves as the interim government or as the government. Atui is no different. So they have... Yeah, except why would they be pretending to be right, the so, people that they should be... Uh, I guess, uh, yeah, very advocating good against. I'm assuming it's because their constitution or whatever they're going by is creating these office pos these officer positions, but really it opens up a different can as to why, of all the different authorities you could name yourself, why choose something that's like the U.S. Replicated? Marshall, right? So you know, it's, it's just it's inconceivable to me, I, and maybe it's unfair to ask you why. I should actually invite them here. <laughs> <laughs> and if anybody from Matui is listening to this program, I would be delighted to have you. But uh, anyway, so they mm -hmm. went there. And what happened? So what I was saying was, I think a number of us in the Hawaiian community were just upset. Upset that someone would do such a thing to Native Hawaiians. So it's like Hawaiians attacking Hawaiians. In this case, actually, I'm understanding that some of them aren't even Hawaiian. Uh, they're actually of other Polynesian descent. But it, that's just not the, you don't attack Hawaiians, right? You just, yeah, not, it's not, not to uphold Hawaiians right. and you physically attack right. them. I think all of us can disagree with some of the actions and decisions of the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. But there's oh, a, yes. <laughs> right. I mean, you and I both. Yeah. But there's a certain way that you uphold yourself because the, how you behave is a reflection of the Hawaiian community as a whole. So their behaviors are just unacceptable. It was, and what, what did they do? I mean, specifically. Did well, they, they did. They assaulted staff within the Office of Foreign Affairs. And for complete disclosure, I used to work for the Office of Foreign Affairs, and the staff that was assaulted was actually my position that I used to hold at OHA. So it hit home for me. It hit home oh, what right, happened. Right. So this is the frontline staff of OHA, right? These are these are the people that... These are hard-working people trying their best and, every day to do make life right, and, absolutely. Uh, and improve life for uh, for Native Hawaiians. So these are not the political people no, in the organization. They're not the decision makers by any means. They're the ones that say, hello, how can I help you when you come into the Office of Foreign Affairs? Harmless, innocent. So to see what happened really hit home for me. And I think it hit home for a number of Hawaiians. So that's why we decided to galvanize. And oftentimes, Hawaiians have to put themselves in check. And that's what we decided to do in this case. Kahea, or call went out to the Hawaiian community, everyone that agreed uh, that what happened was not pono or not proper, let's come together. So and when you say put themselves in check, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. You mean that the Hawaiian community needs to do its own policing? Absolutely, absolutely. I think uh, that, you know, oftentimes Hawaiians are the best uh, advocate against Hawaiians. So, you know, when something goes wrong or is not proper, it oftentimes takes a Hawaiian to remind them that that's not pono so or So you, you're talking like my kupuna, like my grandmother. <laughs> you know, whenever we were growing up, she was yes. the one that would point out. You know, not this, yeah, or absolutely. not this way, absolutely. or we don't do that. That's not if, how we if, behave. That's not how Hawaiians right. behave. Because we certainly don't want non-Hawaiians telling us how to behave as Hawaiians. So the first people to put people in check 
should be Hawaiians. And that's why we came together. So you came together with a whole group of people, mm -hmm. right? And the intention was to show that in the, you know, it, it wasn't a matter of what you want to believe in or how you believe it. In your opinion, it was that there are there is a line that is not, a line. not to be crossed when you yep. uh, express yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. So and what's that line? I mean, what's that? Well, point? that li one is you don't assault someone of your own ethnicity, especially when it comes to a political issue. Well, I would think you don't assault Physical. innocent people. Pe sure. Period. Sure. You know, but especially people of your own. Yeah, you don't assault anybody. Yeah, but I think in this case, who they pursued. You know, and, and, and how they pursued them just stirred emotion in many of us. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so, Especially you. I mean, these, the people that were affected were actually people you yeah, were in they charge were my of. Employees, or, uh, yeah. Wow, that's pretty, that's bringing it pretty close to home. Right. And, and, well, also, you know, people don't know, my son also works there, so that's I was a little yeah. concerned as well. Right, right. So, you know, so tell me, who, who, the... Who who came together? I mean, who are the groups? There? What kind of people? I mean, were you all of one political persuasion or? Yeah. So let me say first that the kingdom of Atui has come to Oha before. Prior to this, when I was employed there, they would come. Uh, they've never taken on violence. You know, this is the first time they've physically assaulted, assaulted so. anybody, but they have come to Oha before. Going back to the question about who came together, it was a number of organ over 50 Native Hawaiian organizations, Kumuhula, practitioners, all came together. And from the po entire political the, spectrum? And, and across the state too, all islands. So this was not just Oahu, this was leaders from across the Pai'aina or across the land. Wow. So, yeah. the, you know, maybe we ought to, you know, I'm saying this a little cattily, but I, I actually mean it. Maybe we ought to say thank you. Absolutely. Uh, in the sense that they brought yeah. together that kind of unification. Yeah, they did. They brought Kumula, they brought Native Hawaiian organizations. Give us a taste of some of the people who, if you can. I don't want to destroy anybody's privacy. Yeah. No, but no, no. So, I mean, you, you had the Association of Hawaiian Civic Clubs were there, a number of civic clubs. You had Kumuhula like Kelly Ivraishel, Napo Greg. Um, you had well, Kamehameha uh, Hina, Schools, uh, okay. Bina. She was there. Kumuhula, she's another Kumuhula. The day before, actually the day before. She was there the day of. She was participating in the peaceful march from Mauna Ala, and then she heard what happened and came over to the office. Wow, so, you know, I, I have a lot of respect for these people, mm -hmm. you know. Hale, Hale Ona Li'i, Kamehameha Schools was there. So a number of organizations, Everyone put their political differences aside and stood together. I, I, I understand that a lot of people who don't necessarily agree with the civic clubs and others in terms of our political aspirations are also mm -hmm. part of this, uh, part of this uh, grouping. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, Very I, much so. I, I, you told, I guess I... John Osorio from, you know, the Hawaii Nui Akea. Oh, he's the dean he's at the, the dean University now. of Hawaii. He, uh, he was there. Hawaiian Studies. Yep. Uh, Lili Kala Kame Elehiva, well wow, known yeah. uh, UH scholar. You know, she used to protest against me when I was governor. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's, but she uh, never assaulted you. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, no. But, uh, you know, that's, uh, it, it's heartwarming. Yeah. Actually, for me, the, the hidden gem, we, we're going to discuss more um, mm -hmm. about what the statement was and, and how people reacted. But the hidden gem in all yeah. of this was to see such an amazing cross-section of the Hawaiian yeah. community come together on an issue. Mm -hmm. And that issue apparently was, there is a line, guys. There is a line. You know, our queen required certain kind of conduct, our cu culture requires it, our mm -hmm. political effectiveness requires it, and you guys crossed it. Yeah. Was Absolutely. that pretty much That's the summary? Pretty issue? much. Yeah, and I mean, I want to add that a number of senators elected officials within our state system had also signed on to this event as well. So cross intersection of, of Native Hawaiian community leaders uh, from cultural to organizations to Kumuhula, I mean, and, and state senators as well and state, state representatives. Well, that's pretty fantastic. We're going to take a short break right now and we'll be right back. And when we come back, we are going to dig a little deeper into the actual statement itself. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just going to scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here 
on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons, and then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up, and please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. Aloha and mabuhay. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha. Welcome back to Talk Story with John Wahe'e and our guest this afternoon, Kuhil Lewis, the CEO of the Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement, CNHA. <laughs> and we are discussing the recent events that took place in the Hawaiian community, both at the Office of Hawaiian Affairs and just um, among many, many groups in response to what the uh, nation of Atui, uh, you know, did at the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. Now, I don't want to give the impression to anybody that we're picking on the nation of Atui yeah, because yeah. we would have, I think the people who participated in that, and correct me if I'm wrong, would have stood up uh, no matter who uh, behaved in this Absolutely. fashion. Absolutely. And, um, you know, uh, for the, uh, well, anyway, for those of you who would like to ask us any, uh, call in and say something or ask a question, our call in, our hotline is 808-374-2014. 808-374-2014. So, the group that got together mm -hmm. actually created a statement, mm -hmm. which, by the way, is not that easy. There's been only a oh, few yeah. times uh, when we had almost unanimous consent mm -hmm. on any kind of position paper. And in this case, it appears that that occurred. So I, I thought, uh, you know, Kohia, if you could, uh, we, our listeners might appreciate uh, Maybe you're walking through some of the high points of what that statement was and yeah. how, what you were trying to accomplish. Sure, sure. I mean, let me say first, I mean, when we did the press conference, the news, of course, takes a sound bite. Yeah, that's of, why of, we were here. Too. Of a much broader statement. And it is not intended necessarily to attack someone, but rather put on notice that this is not how we behave as Hawaiians. A yeah, lot of it's, that, like, it's like my grandmother used to do. Yeah. You know, Keone, you don't do right. that. You know, right. We don't do that. So in this case, you know, the soundbite that might have been shared on the news was just a snippet of a much broader statement of Hawaiian community. So I'll share a little bit about what it says in here. It's unfortunate how the actions of just a few interrupted some incredible work being done in our community each and every day. Before they were attacked and challenged, OHA staff were actively working on advocacy efforts to ensure sufficient water for Kalo farmers, appropriate funding for Hawaiian-focused education, affordable housing for our ohana, and respect for Hawaiian claims to land and assets. This is a fraction of the work here done at the Office of Hawaiian Affairs to serve our community, not to mention the myriad of other agencies and organizations doing amazing work as well. We will not tolerate extremists co-opting the Hawaiian sovereignty movement and all of the progress that has been made on behalf of our Lahui. So, I mean, again... So the, the, I guess the point was, because I have seen meetings at OHA where it's hot and heavy, mm -hmm. where people are passionate about their beliefs and, are, you know, n have no inhibition about expressing it. So this is not a... Not a what you're talking about is not, uh, you know, re a reaction to mm -hmm. that necessarily, but to the idea that what the people that were attacked mm -hmm. were the staff right doing their job the frontline staff and in this case you know that was that was our point is these they're innocent they didn't do anything i mean if anything there's a board of trustees who you elect and yeah, we have when a you democratic go in there and you, and you, you share can, your two you know you share your right. two cents but even then uh, hopefully you conduct yourself in, in a, a way that right. doesn't uh, lead to any kind of violent action right. 
Right. I mean, the statement also points out that we're 550,000 strong. So that's how many Hawaiians exist right now. And they're probably 550,000 points of views. That's, that, that's what the statement goes on to say. Many of us gathered together to represent various differing ideologies, political theories, and strategies to move our lahui forward. We stand united on much, including our kuleana to aloha aina, and to hold ourselves and our community accountable. So again, we're from all over the place. We have all kinds of different ideologies, but, but, there, but we don't behave be, that way. It seems to be what you're saying is that, but there is a line mm -hmm. that we all agree on right. that you shouldn't cross. Correct. And it got crossed in this instance. Correct. Yes. And, you know, um, go ahead. No, no, no. That, I mean, that's the crux of the, the statement. I mean, it just says we want to hold ourselves accountable. Again, we should be policing ourselves. You know? you know, that's a really interesting concept, the idea of policing ourselves, as you say, the Native Hawaiian community. You know, if somebody behaves in a manner that uh, we don't agree, we, you know, that crosses that line, which mm -hmm. I'm taking to mean violent, because surely you can't be saying in this statement that people can't mm -hmm. passionately protest. Something. No, not at all. I mean, whether we agree with them at, or not, Oftentimes, I mean, I remember, for example, when the Hawaiians, the group from Waimanalo and across the right. state, very early in the 70s, mm -hmm. went to the, um, the uh, Hilo airport and essentially shut it down. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a very effective protest. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't fall in the category of what you are talking about here, mm -hmm. does no. it? No. And, and let me clarify, when I say police ourselves, I mean police ourselves in the sense of holding one another accountable and ensuring that they know what is pili, what is pono, and what is not. Uh -huh. So in, in terms of enforcing the law, you know, that's a whole other That's, a whole that's other somebody division. else's right. job. But in terms of is there a moment to educate on what is pono and what is not? Absolutely. And that was the, one of the intents of this, of this gathering was community at large. This is not how we behave, right? So it's a notice to the Lahui at large. Well, you know what's interesting is, and, and what I, I thought about is the fact that um, what, what we were, what was interesting is that there, there was a kind of subtle, I don't know whether I call this uh, reaction to what happened there in, in this sense, that it seemed like to a number of people uh, that I have talked to, that if the if a Hawaiian group had done this uh, to, for example, um, Mauna Kea mm -hmm. or some where we we not done what what was done there, not use any kind of, of violence, which I'm assuming that the mm -hmm. entire uh, movement was is against, mm -hmm. but that the penalties mm -hmm. that people sought for people who were protesting against the, what was happening from the state and the general public seemed to be a little higher, a little stiffer than the penalties that were given to these people yeah. who actually beat up Native Hawaiian right. innocent right. workers. Right. So to the, first of all, I want to commend HPD because... Well, I, HPD, well, yeah. Susan Ballard in particular, because I think she has heard, heard the kahea or the call from the Native Hawaiian community. The responding officers that day did not know that someone was assaulted to the degree. Oh, oh great. So they, great. they great. were pursuing what information was available to them at the time. So right? HPD, by the way, it was not the, uh, just so we clarify that, there was this, 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 uh, press conference was not aimed at the HPD. In fact, Susan right. Ballard and the officers in general have but always I, been, you know. But I think the, the severity of what occurred, you know, you're right. Even though they did not have the information available to them at the time in terms of the, the degree of the assault, had they stormed any other state government office, would they be held to the same standard? Get out one hour later, right? Yeah. $100 bail. So I don't think so. Do I think there's inequity one way or the other? Absolutely. But HPD looks like they are taking it seriously, and they are, they've have since passed the case over to the Attorney General 
where he can determine what is appropriate and what is not. You know, that's a really interesting point, and it is sort of subtle, and I'm not sure people are getting it. But what we are saying here is not only are we pleasing ourselves, but we want equal treatment. Yes. <laughs> so that when people do things against Native Hawaiians, they ought to be treated in the same way that you would treat yeah. it if some Native Hawaiian right. did somebody who was in another state agency yeah. who was not doing things for Native Hawaiians. Absolutely. I mean, I have, I have traffic tickets higher than $100, you know, and I, you know, <laughs> so I, you know, so I'm just saying. I mean, hundred dollar bail for even even storming a state agency is kind of questionable, yeah. uh, comparatively to other other charges. And we have Aloha Aina advocates out there for speaking Ola Aloha Hawaii in court. You know, getting thrown in prison for that or and yeah, facing yeah. hundreds you know, of dollars. In fact, in well, one good thing that has happened as a result of that is the fact that yes. now uh, the you know Hawaiian is uh, interpretation interpreters yep. are provided. But you're right. The point is that I guess that this effort was the, the signal mm -hmm. to the native, I mean, to the community at large mm -hmm. and to the native Hawaiian community that number one, we are responsible for our own actions on the first instance. Yeah. That when it when it crosses the line, we'll call it out. Right. And second, you know, don't think that just because this is Hawaiian on Hawaiian violence that it ought to be treated any different than violence that occurs anywhere else. I, right. I, I mean, I, I do believe that that's mm -hmm. the message. By the way, um, I got a, uh, we got uh, informed that the native, uh, that the uh, na Polynesian na nation of Atui uh, were not acting like federal marshals. They, they, they were acting as federal marshals because they were trying to get certified as federal marshals. I, I don't understand the mm -hmm. logic of all of that, mm. but it, 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 we were corrected. So maybe I, 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 maybe there's a logic to that. I, I don't know. Yeah. I yeah. mean, every other time we've seen uh, Hawaiians, you know, the kingdom advocates do anything. They had their own police force. Sure. They didn't have to pretend sure. they were United States police force. So I, I got uh, a little mixed up. Yeah. I think it brings up an interesting point about the whole conversation about sovereignty in general. You know, Hawaiians have not had enough opportunity to discuss sovereignty. You know, right. um, so maybe there's maybe this is a beginning to a conversation about sovereignty. You know, the the furtherance of of Native Hawaiian rights and and really and reconciliation. Yeah, reconciliation. Which, by the way, I just wanted to again add something that your statement that we have unrelinquished sovereignty is not something you just made up. It's actually mm -hmm. the language used in the apology resolution that was passed by the United States Congress and right. signed by the President of the United States. It's an acknowledgement Absolutely. that that exists. I want to thank you for all the work that you're doing for uh, Native Hawaiians in the state of Hawaii and elsewhere. Thanks, Gov. And uh, thank you for appearing and for uh, enlightening all of us. So yes. We'll be back in two weeks, I believe. For another talk story with John Wahee. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon. Aloha. <laughs>